your furnace blows cold air and your air conditioner doesn't. The water seems to go everywhere you don't want it to and your kitchen and bath haven't been remodeled since the 50s. Well, welcome to the Home Improvement Hour with Dick Ray, the master plumber. Kansas City has depended on Dick Ray and Shawnee Mission Plumbing, Heating and Cooling to solve heating, cooling, plumbing, and remodeling problems for over 50 years. All you need to do is call 576-7798. And now the master plumber with a degree in mechanical engineering is here to help. Here's the potentate of pipes, the Earl of Electricity, the Emperor of Air, the Imperial Poobah of Plumbing, the Grand Toileteer, the Master Plumber, Dick Ray. Hey, good morning. You're listening to the Home Improvement Hour with Dick Ray, the Master Plumber. That would be me. And I'm here every Sunday from 11 to noon on KMBZ, and we talk on this show about things around your house. Uh, actually, what we talk about are the things that I do every day for a living. And I think the people that are interested in this show, I know a lot of them are do-it-yourselfers that uh, are working on projects around the house and are just eager for information that will help them with their project. And they've learned from listening to the show before that I'll tell you anything I know if it'll help you out on your project. So if you're a do-it-yourself, we welcome you. But I also know... Uh, that there are a lot of people, and this same thing applied. I, I used to te- teach classes uh, for do-it-yourselfers, actually, in my office and, and showroom. I'd teach classes for for uh, what I thought were do-it-yourselfers, and a lot of them were. But there was a certain kind of people in the class, too, that just really wanted to have a better understanding of how some of the mechanical things in their home worked, and they never intended to lift a wrench to work on anything themselves. They just wanted to be a little bit smarter and have a little bit of knowledge. So uh, there's probably some people like that that listen to the show, too, and that probably another class of people are wanting to find out what's new, what's coming down the road as far as Oh, better furnaces and heat pumps and air conditioners and just uh, things that maybe weren't available when you built your house that you might want to consider uh, oh, putting into your house to update it or whatever. Anyway, whatever uh, category you fit into, we welcome you to the show. We're here every Sunday from 11 to noon. And I, uh, uh, the, the, the snow is starting to melt. It actually got up above free de- freezing yesterday and Today, and it's starting to melt a little bit, and we're just going to get soupy and slushy out there, and that's the unfun part of snow. <laughs> but anyway, I, I picked a topic today. This is definitely uh, a do-it-yourself project. This is something that a lot of do-it-yourselfers do, and that is drain cleaning. Uh, that's something that, you know, you can uh, go down to the home center and get a, a cable and run it through a drain and, and save the expense of having to hire somebody like me to to clean to clean a drain and uh, a lot of time that's not too tough of a job and you know drain cleaning is probably a job that might seem to many persons to be a job that really doesn't require too much skill but that's actually far from from being true like any other job uh, there's a good way to clean a drain and then there are some not so good ways and if a drain is cleaned by someone that's skilled at his trade who uses better techniques then the drain usually is going to stay open longer than one that's cleaned by somebody who's, you know, just in a hurry or doesn't know exactly what he's doing. Now, let me tell you a story, and this is a true story. This happened about a month or two ago. Uh, I got a call from a woman who was having sewer troubles, and uh, the main sewer, which ran underground from her house out to the street, it had been causing problems uh, for two or three months, and she'd had another drain cleaning company out of, couple of times and both times the problem of the sewage backing up in her basement floor drain had gone away for a short time but not for very long uh, then the sewer would start backing up again and at this point when i was talking to her uh, two or three months later uh, she was just frustrated and she didn't know what to do so she called me well i listened to her story and i told her up front on the phone that it sounded like we probably would be running our sewer camera into our sewer line most likely. You see, when tree roots grow into sewer line like hers, once you cut the tree roots out of the sewer with a cutter on the end of a drain cleaning cable, generally the line's going to stay open for about a year or so before needing to be cleaned again, before you need to cut the tree roots out again. 
And in a case like hers, where the line was only staying open a few weeks before it plugged up again, uh, it generally means that there is some serious problem like a break in the sewer or a place where the sewer is running uphill instead of downhill or some other serious problem. And at that point, we run our sewer camera into the sewer line to see exactly what the problem is and then locate it with the camera's radio transmitter signal. Uh, the point being to see and locate the problem with the camera so we know exactly where to dig with our backhoe to correct the problem. So I told her uh, that this more than likely was what we were going to end up doing, run the camera and the locator. And, of course, you know, when we get down to the point where we're digging with our backhoe uh, in your yard, that's not something that you as a homeowner look forward to. I mean, it corrects a problem, but it's expensive. And anyway, that's what I warned this woman to expect in all likelihood, just based on her story that she'd told me. Well, when Zach, uh, my plumber, went out to her house uh, expecting to run the camera, uh, and of course, first thing he did was to run the router cable and the cutter into the sewer line to clear, to clean the sewer so that all of the waste and liquid could drain out of the line before running the camera into the line. And it's, it's just always better if the sewer line is open and fairly clean inside so that the camera can see the problem better. If the line's full of sewage and water and waste, then the camera it really is just blind. It can't see anything. So anyway, uh, Zach ran his cable in, and in a, a standard sewer cleaning machine has got 100 feet of usable cable in it. And, and Zach discovered that the sewer uh, didn't open until he had all of his 100-foot sewer cable into the pipe. And at that point, 100 feet out, he hit some tree roots, and the line opened. Anyway, it, it made Zach wonder if maybe the whole problem with the sewer was just that not enough cable had been run into it in the past because the line opened just as he was getting to the bitter end of the cable. So anyway, uh, what Zach did, I mean, he's done a lot of this work in the past, and what Zach did was add another 50 feet of cable to the 100 feet that he already had in the sewer, and guess what? The next 10 or 15 feet of sewer pipe beyond the 100-foot point was heavily packed with tree roots, so packed that it took quite a while just to cut through the roots and get beyond them. Well, Zach went ahead and ran out the entire 50 foot more of extra cable just to be sure that he didn't hit anything else, and, and he didn't. And he was able to get a full-size four-inch cutter all the way through the line, which is good news for the homeowner because it means that in all likelihood their problems uh, were now over. The really good part of the news is that the homeowner didn't have to pay to have the sewer camera run into the line and didn't have to pay to have the sewer dug up to make repairs and tearing up their front yard with a backhoe and all that stuff. Now, I did take Zach half a day probably uh, to, to do the work and finally cut through those firmly entrenched roots in the sewer, but that's a lot better than having to dig with a backhoe uh, unnecessarily in this case. So what's the moral of the story? Well, for one thing, there's a big difference between Zach and the guy that cleaned this sewer uh, the first two times. That, that much is for sure. Uh, as either the other guy was just in a hurry or he didn't know as much as Zach did, didn't know enough to put some more cable on there. And uh, as with drain cleaning or any other job, it does make a difference who you hire to do the work. Uh, you for sure don't want to hire a drain cleaner who cleans drains for a set fee in advance. A set fee, a, a set in advance fee makes the drain cleaner, it means that the drain cleaner can only afford to stay at your house so long before the job becomes unprofitable for him. And he begins to want to get out of your house, whether or not the job is done and done well or not. He's charging a set amount, and once you get past a set point, uh, it's just not in his not to his benefit to stay there. Uh, well, anyway, that's about it. There are a lot of other tricks to drain cleaning uh, that a person who does it every day, like I do, learns over many, many years. And I guess, I guess really what you're looking for is a combination of experience and knowledge along with the mindset that the drain cleaner or the plumber has got to have uh, a mindset that says, I'm going to do this job right, and if it takes a little extra time to do it, uh, that way, then I'm still going to do it. That's the way I'm going to do it. 
Uh, and and if you're getting paid a set fee in advance to clean a drain, it's hard <laughs> to have that mindset, I would think. Uh, you, you know, I'm only charging so much, and uh, uh, there's that's all I'm going to make, and we got to get out of here after a certain amount of time or the job's going to not be very profitable for me. I don't want to spend all day doing it. You don't want that. Anyway, phone lines are now open. If you've got any questions about drain cleaning or sewers or tree roots or sewer cameras or pipe locators or backhoes or or really any kind of drain cleaning we're talking about the main line out of your house but if you've got a question about cleaning your kitchen sink line or a lavatory or bathtub or a shower uh, or if you have questions about really any, anything else uh, call me or of course if you've got a question about something else mechanical in your house uh, your furnace making a funny noise or if you've got a do-it-yourself project you'd like to have a little bit of help with, uh, I'll be glad to talk about that too. And of course, keep in mind that I do the things that we talk about on this show every day for a living, and that would include fixing and replacing broken air conditioners and furnaces and a lot of that this last few weeks here with the cold weather, Uh, air conditioners and furnaces and heat pumps and plumbing repairs, as well as complete kitchen and bath remodeling also. We do all of that. So if I can pass on any information to you that will help, I'm more than glad to do it. Uh, Our number is 576-7798. This is the best part of the show coming up. Uh, This is the part where we're going to talk about what you're interested in or what questions you have. Uh, so anyway, but it, I, it requires your participation. It means you got to pick up the phone, give us a call, uh, take the heat off of me. I could probably talk forever, I suppose, but it's it general. It it really will be more interesting if you pick up your phone and give us a call. So once again, our phone number is five seven six seven seven nine eight. You're listening to the Home Improvement Hour with Dick Ray, the Master Plumber. We're going to take a short break, and I will be right back. We are going to transcend the quagmire that is politics. Politics are really important, and you must be engaged in them, and you must do your own homework. But it's for you to do your own homework. Don't you dare vote for anybody because anybody told you to. The time for easy answers is over. The time for simple solutions is now. This is the Glenn Beck Program. Weekdays from 9 to 11 on News Radio 980 KMBZ. This is Dick Ray, the master plumber at Shawnee Mission Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Low humidity in your home means dry, itchy skin. It also means a dry environment where bacteria and viruses thrive. It means you get sick more often. For over 40 years, I've sold only April Air humidifiers because they're the best. Always have been. But now they're even better. A few years ago, April Air invented the first truly automatic humidity control system. With its outdoor temperature sensor and microprocessor, April Air makes all of the adjustments automatically on a daily basis that you used to have to make manually. The result is you can have the right humidity levels that you need for health and comfort without the daily manual adjustments you used to have to make and without over-humidifying your home. April Air, installed by Nick Ray, the master plumber, the best that money can buy. All you need to know in 30 minutes. Hey, it's EJ, and Monday, we'll take you across the country and around the world. Dallas for the Super Bowl, Washington to the White House, live to Cairo for the latest there. And, of course, we are live and local with the top stories and traffic and weather together on the nines. Kansas City's Morning News with EJ Becker and Ellen Shank. Weekday mornings from 5 to 9 on News Radio 980 KMBZ. And we're back. You're listening to the Home Improvement Hour. The Home Improvement Hour with Dick Ray, the master plumber. And that's me. And I'm here every Sunday, 11 to noon. Uh, I guess th- today's uh, show is what you would call the Super Super Bowl pregame show. And you're in trouble if you're wanting to hear about the uh, all that kind of stuff because I don't know all that much about football. I do know I found out several days ago that the Green Bay Packers are playing another team, but I, 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 I hate to even admit this. You know, I feel like a communist, you know, being born in this country and not knowing who the other team is on Super Pittsburgh Bowl Sunday. Pittsburgh Steelers. Pittsburgh Steelers. Thank you, Rod. I appreciate that. Now I feel much more educated and worthy of being in this country. I just feel like a communist. That's something that every red-blooded American ought to know. <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, all the phone lines are lit up, so uh, we're gonna we're gonna get to the phone lines here and see if we can help some folks out. And we'll start with Don. Hello, Don. What can I do for you? Uh, how about using copper sulfate in your drain? Is that a waste of money, or is it any good for tree roots? It is not a waste of money. It is a good thing. And uh, the Johnson County Sewer District, the Johnson County Wastewater District, used to give it away. Uh, When tree roots grow into your sewer, it means that there's a leak in the sewer, and the sewage and water and waste are leaking into the ground through the leak in the sewer. And, uh, and And the tree roots find the leak. The leak is a source of... Uh, moisture and nutrients uh, i mean it smells like heck to us but to a tree root it's just a source of nutrients and so the tree roots follow the leak and grow inside of the sewer and then when the tree roots get to where they will block the sewer then uh, the sewer plugs up and you have to have somebody like me out there to cut the tree roots out and i come out and i cut them out and the line is open but the roots are still in the sewer and they will grow back and if you don't do anything about it, the tree roots will grow back. Generally, it takes a year, maybe a little more, a little less, but somewhere about a year from then, the tree roots will have grown back to the point where the sewer is blocked again, and then you have to have me back out there again to uh, cut the tree roots out. It's kind of a never-ending deal. Well, copper sulfate, which you mentioned, is a product that you can buy you know, you buy it at any hardware store in the country, I think, and it won't say it'll have some name on the can that says root something, root destroyer, root troll, or root this or root that. And I don't know what it is about copper sulfate, but their copper sulfate is like deep blue crystals, looks like gravel. And when you, if you, if you do this religiously, this is the hard part. You've got to remember to do this once a month. If you once a month take a cup of copper sulfate crystals and flush it down your toilet at night, uh, the copper sulfate copper sulfate crystals sit in the sewer and they slowly dissolve over that next month or so. And the copper sulfate solution doesn't like. Uh, I mean, the tree roots don't like copper sulfate. It, it won't kill the tree, but the tree roots don't like it, and so they won't grow into the into the sewer or won't grow in as rapidly. And so if you put copper sulfate crystals into the sewer once a month, you may not ever see the drain cleaning guy, but not see me again, ever. <laughs> so, okay. so that's a good tip. And the Johnson County Wastewater District used to give them away, but it got too expensive uh the wastewater district knew that once the copper sulfate flowed through your sewer it would get into theirs and of course they have the same problem with tree roots that you do too okay thank you that's Thanks. a good tip don another, appreciate you calling another question now, what, yep. what about using sulfuric acid in a slow running kitchen drain okay now that i won't agree with that's oh especially in an older house an older house that had uh, plumbing lines in it that where the drains were piped in steel or cast iron. Uh, a, a lot of the drain cleaners that you buy at the hardware store or the grocery store, they're either real strong acids like sulfuric acid or they're real strong alkali. And either one will eat up, uh, eat up um, oh, steel or cast iron drains. And so I don't recommend it for that reason. It's also, you got to be real careful with it just because of what it is. And the other thing about it is, uh, although a chemical like that may open a drain, keep in mind that you're trying to clean a pipe that's maybe two inches in diameter. Well, when you put the chemical in the drain, as soon as you get a small opening in the drain, the chemicals are going to be gone. So you may only have a half or three-quarter inch opening in a pipe that should be two inch diameter and the only way you're going to get rid of the of the debris to the full diameter of the pipe or the best way to do it is to run a cable into the line that's going to stir things up and then at the same time that the cable is stirring up the gunk in the pipe you run as much water as possible to flush it on down the line right okay thank you thank you good call don bye-bye all righty. That opens the line. If you'd like to join us, uh, our number is 576 
Let's see here. We'll go to Ed next. Hi, Ed. What can I do for you? Yes, sir. Uh, the question isn't on any of the sewer pipes, Ron, but I'm having problems with my sidewalls. My home doesn't have insulation between the outside wall and the inside wall. Uh huh. Is there a method for insulating that? Yeah, there is. I used to know a lot more about that than I do now, and I, there are probably definitely new techniques that I'm not aware of, but I'll just tell you what I know. I We actually, oh gosh, 20 years ago probably, we uh, at our company had insulation blowers, and we blew insulation into sidewalls of houses, and at the time, and again, this is old technology, may all be changed now, but we'd we do one of two things. We'd drill a hole in the uh, outside of the house two inch in diameter and stick a tube up inside of the wall and blow uh, cellulose insulation under pressure into the wall cavity pull the tube out slowly little by little and when we pulled it out the wall was pumped full of insulation and then we'd put up a, a plug in the hole that could be painted to match the house uh, I mean there were other techniques that we used too you can drill two holes and pump insulation in the, in the bottom hole first and then top it off by blowing insulation in the top hole and i know that there are ways to do that with foam and cellulose probably fiberglass too and that being said i'm going to say keep in mind that what i'm talking about is what we were doing 20 years ago so there probably are new techniques that are a lot better now and so my recommendation is to talk to somebody that's smarter than i am about insulation somebody that does that for a living and then you're probably going to ask me who do i recommend and unfortunately i don't know anybody in the insulation business that i can recommend good bad or indifferent so i don't know how to help you on that part of it i was just wondering if it'd be worth it just to go ahead and tear the sheetrock out inside and insulate it properly and then re-sheetrock you could but that's the hard way to do it that and then and actually, I, I, you're talking about take the sheetrock off and put uh, fiberglass bats or something like that in it. Yes, sir. I, I, really, I really think that the blown-in insulation or blown-in foam uh, has a higher R value and, uh, and, and is packed more tightly into the wall. There's less voids than there are with fiberglass bats. So. But anyway, you're, you really ought to talk to somebody that's a lot smarter about insulation than I am. Well, you're very smart, but thank you for the advice. <laughs> okay. I appreciate the call. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Yeah, we used to do that it's been years ago, and we've sold our insulation blowing machines. Don't do that anymore. Decided we're better off to stick with what we're really good at and, and not do the insulation. Oh, let's see. The f- uh, phone's already ringing, so I won't give out the number. Let's see. We got... Um, John on the line. Hi, John. What can I do for you? Yeah, I got a walk-up basement, and uh, when it rains real hard, yep. No, uh, when it rains real hard, it, it gets water into my basement. It got a two-inch drain at the bottom of the two steps when it comes down. Yeah. I wonder if any way to keep that rain, uh, to drain that water, so it won't infiltrate my basement every time it rains real hard okay so you got basement stairs coming in from the outside and when it rains real hard the drain isn't fast enough to keep up with it or does the drain just get plugged up i think it's just not not big enough or fast enough to keep up with it Mm. oh that's a tough one you need a bigger drain or a or a sump pump or something now maybe just that the drain is partially blocked off so of course, the easiest thing to do would would be to run a cable through that drain at the bottom of the steps and get a garden hose running at the same time and just flush it out with water and run the drain cleaning cable through the line. And may, with a little bit of luck, the whole problem with the drain is just that uh, it, just that the, it was partially plugged up. Now, if, unless it's a huge area, a normal two-inch drain surely is going to take care of all the rain that's going to fall in a small space like that, unless it's a case where water running down the backyard like a river is coming down the stairs. You're not going to be able to take care of that. That would have to be taken care of by regrading the yard to keep the river from running down the stairs. Okay, it's actually more like a, it's the concrete walkway, so water is kind of, it's all kind of tilted to run down the steps. Oh, that drain. it's tilted the wrong way. Boy, I mean, the best way to cure that, I hate to say this, is to tear out the concrete and grade it the proper way. 
not okay. not the easiest thing in the world, but that's the right way to do it. Okay, so the concrete shouldn't be graded toward the house. It should be no, up to nope. The ground and the concrete ought to be graded away from the house. Okay. Okie dokie. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot. You betcha. All righty. That opens the line. If you'd like to join us, 576-7798. You're listening to the Home Improvement Hour with Dick Ray, the master plumber. Time to break for the news. Uh, we got one open line, 576-7798. Give us a call. We'll be right back after the news. I'm Robert Ford with the 1130 Report on News Radio 980 KMBZ. 29-year-old man is in critical condition after getting hit by two vehicles while crossing the street in Lawrence. Police say the man was struck at the intersection of 23rd and Iowa Streets around 8 last night. The incident is still under investigation. A man was found dead in the middle of Lake Crest Drive in Shawnee. Police haven't identified the man whose body was discovered shortly after midnight. The death is considered suspicious. A December crash that injured a Kansas City police officer whose car was broadsided by a suspected drunken driver has the city's police department confronting the reality that some officers don't buckle up while on duty. Video from Officer Serge Grinick's patrol car showed that his head likely slammed into the head of his partner. Neither officer was wearing a seatbelt. Kansas City Star reported that the wreck was one of several recent accidents that injured officers who were unrestrained. National Highway Traffic Safety Administration found in a recent study that at least 42% of police officers killed in vehicle crashes across the country over the last 30 years were not properly restrained. Now your exclusive Weather Channel forecast. Flurries possible today, cloudy all day with highs around 38, getting down to 18 tonight and still forecast to be cloudy. Tomorrow, chillier and mostly cloudy, highs around 27, getting bitterly cold Monday night into Tuesday and a chance of some accumulating snowfall on Tuesday as well. Currently 34 at KCI, 34 in Olathe, 35 at your official weather station. Next local report at noon. I'm Robert Ford reminding you to tune in two, three, four times today to News Radio 980 KMBZ. Hey, it's EJ. And Ellen. I'm a Virgo. Aquarius. My favorite color is red. I like yellow. For breakfast, I enjoy spicy, aromatic foods. I hate it when you eat spicy, aromatic foods. But the one thing we agree on... You like Pringles, don't you? Kansas City's Morning News with EJ and Ellen. Weekday mornings, 5 to 9. On News Radio 980 KMBZ. And we're back. You're listening to the Home Improvement Hour with Dick Ray, the master plumber on, uh, I don't know what kind of a day you call this. It's warmer, and so I guess that makes it good on a Super Bowl Sunday. Oh, let's see here. Uh, get back to the phones here. All the lines are lit up, so we'll see if we can answer some questions. We'll start with Steve. Hi, Steve. What can I do for you? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I have a question. Um, I have a water heater that's over 10 years old. And I recently remodeled both bathrooms and put in new mowing faucets. Okay. And uh, my wife and my kids keep telling me that they can't get a hot shower. They don't get any hot water. But when I take a shower or I run hot water, in the kitchen I get plenty of hot water. I recently had uh, the cartridge in the main bathroom replaced, which fixed that problem. Mm -hmm. But is it the hot water heater or is it the cartridges in the faucets? Well, now you say they're n not getting any hot water. Does that mean that the they're what getting they get hot water but not for very long, or they get never get hot water? It's just kind of lukewarm or kind of lukewarm water. Okay. Now I've noticed uh, in in our bathroom with the shower valve when you turn it all the way, like if you want total hot water, mm -hmm. it's not very hot. If you do it at about three o'clock. You know, on the faucet, it's fine. It's 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 hot. It's a good hot shower. Uh -huh. right, so I don't know if it's if it's the users or if it's the faucets or if it's the hot water heater. Okay, and you you use a different shower. It sounds like than your wife does, right? And and yeah, that shower it, is fine. Well, no, we use the same shower, but the kids use the main shower, the main bathroom. But I, I don't know if it's the faucet or the hot water heater, but I can get hot water. I mean, I take a shower, and I have no problem. So. Oh, but your wife takes a shower in the same shower, and she says she doesn't get hot water. Right. Oh, okay. Oh, golly. Uh, it could be a number of things. You probably need to start with a thermometer, a candy thermometer, or something that will go up to 150 degrees or so. 
and and start by going to the kitchen sink not the shower and and just turn on the the hot side of the kitchen sink faucet or a lavatory or something and see what the temperature is and and, oh boy it's hard to say what you're going to get used to be normal hot water temperature uh was 140 degrees and if you turn on only the hot water you ought to get 140 degrees well now uh, there are so many attorneys in the world that have sued so many people uh, because elderly people or babies got scalded that now everybody's saying turn it down to 120, 130 degrees or 120 degrees. But anyway, you need to know what you're starting out with. Uh, 120. De- if you've got 130 degrees, let's say, at the uh, kitchen faucet, but you go up to the shower faucet and all you can get is 110 degrees at the shower faucet well then there's something going on there's there's some mixing going on uh at the shower faucet and did you said that something about remodeling these baths does this have a fairly new uh shower faucet in it this mowing shower faucet yeah there's about three years old about three years old okay all righty. Well, well, measure the temperature of the kitchen sink, measure the temperature at the shower. And, and if she says she's not getting hot enough water, then she's probably getting water that's less than 110 degrees, probably 100 degrees or something like that. Uh, and so measure the temperature. And if it's not high enough, a lot of the new, probably almost all of the new shower faucets, have uh, temperature limiting stops built into them that will limit the amount of hot water that you can get out of uh, out of a shower now they don't consider that necessary at the kitchen sink that'll let you run as hot a water as you want but when you're in the shower uh, they don't want you getting scalded and so they will put a stop and it's back behind the handle where you can't even see and it only lets you turn the cartridge or the handle so far before you hit the stop and then you can't get any hotter water well if a lot of times all you have to do on newer faucets is just uh is just take the handle and the chrome trim and all that stuff off find the temperature limiting stop usually it's pretty obvious when you see it what it is and then pull the temperature limiting stop off and rotate it one spline or two on the stem so that it will allow the handle to turn the cartridge a little bit farther and then you'll get hotter water now it's also probably possible if you've got uh cooler water in the shower than you do elsewhere in the house that there's a problem with the cartridge or the pressure balancing device uh, in that in that mowing faucet. The cartridge, the pressure balancing device is the oh the part of the faucet that keeps you from getting scalded uh, when you're in the shower and somebody flushes the toilet. Okay. So does that all make sense? Yeah, it does. Like okay. I said, I, I never have a problem, but you <laughs> seem to always do. Um, one thing about the drain cleaning that I just you know, I've been listening to the show. Mm-hmm. Um, it's part of, part of preventive maintenance with uh, a washer and daughters with long hair. Once a year, I have my drains cleaned all the way out to the street, and I have never had a problem since I started doing that. Okay. Yeah, th- there are a lot of houses. I, I don't necessarily recommend cleaning the main line out to the street once a year because generally you don't have problems with that line unless you've got tree roots in the sewer or something like that. But there are a lot of people of my customers where they know that they have a problem and and rather than wait for the thing to plug up, they'll have us come out once a year because, you know, if they wait for it to plug up, it's always New Year's Eve or Christmas Eve or Sunday. Exactly. (laughs) That's when it happened, Christmas Eve. Yep, (laughs) yep. Makes you a believer, doesn't it? (laughs) Uh, Sure does. All right, thanks for your help. I appreciate it. You bet. Appreciate the call. All righty, that opens the line. If you'd like to join us, uh, our number is 576-7798. Again, you're listening to Dick Ray, the Master Plumber, uh, 576-7798. And uh, I should have told this to Steve, our last call or two, after, I mean, and this would apply to anybody, but this last call particularly, once he gets into that, and starts taking temperatures and getting into the faucet very often on something like that you're going to say you know i need to ask another question well anyway steve if you're still listening don't hesitate to call me if you get into this project and have any more uh, more questions arise 
Anyway, uh, let's see here. Who's next? We'll go to Joe. Hello, Joe. What can I do for you? Yes, um, I've got a couple of problems. Uh, first of all, I had a, a Renai tankless water heater installed a couple of months ago. Okay. And in one of the pipes, it has developed what I thought was a knock. And I kind of traced it down to one area where a 90-degree elbow is. Yeah. And it, I, I can't tell if it's actually uh, expansion and contraction of the pipe where it's fastened to the joist, the ceiling joist, yeah. or joist, or if it's an actual knock. And I wonder if there's any solution for that. What kind of pipes? Are, what are the what they material? Pex. Pex pipes. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I've never, I've never. So it's not coming from the water heater itself. Uh, it's it, it's coming. It's away from the water yeah, heater. Right. Uh huh. Okay. Oh boy! Now that's something that if it was a drain, I'd I hear that problem uh, fairly frequently. But with water lines, I don't. And but you th- you may be thinking along the right line. I've heard that problem for years with drains, especially well, it's plastic drains in particular. But plastic has a real high coefficient of thermal expansion, which means that when you heat. When you change the temperature on something that's made out of plastic and packs or plastic drain lines, uh, then the pipe changes in length. So if you go from room temperature of 70 degrees and then all of a sudden raise the temperature of the drain because you're running hot water down the drain and you change the temperature of the drain to 130 degrees, well, that 60 degree change in temperature makes the pipe expand. And if that pipe is is goes through i think the places i've seen this is where the the drain pipe uh not a water line but a drain pipe goes through a hole in the plate at the bottom of the wall and it's just jammed real tight into that hole and so the pipe isn't free to move and expand like it wants to and so what it does is it moves and jerks and it's like "Eh, eh, eh." and it actually makes almost like a a ticking noise when people hear this they a lot of times think it's a leak it sounds exactly like a drip now i don't i've never heard of that complaint with plastic water lines but i don't know why they couldn't do the same thing if they were fixed real tightly with a clamp to uh to a joist the, the only thing about that is that drains are rigid and they are pretty much inflexible they can't flex sideways but a a PEX water line, if it needs to move somewhere, I would think it would just uh, elongate and, and put a little curve in the middle of the pipe. Yeah, well, I tried to put some of that, uh, you know, the, the uh, foam pipe insulation that you get, Yeah. the black foam pipe, mm-hmm. and I tried to put some of that around it, and it, it has not solved the problem. Yeah. Uh, that pipe is directly below what I have in an office upstairs, and I can hear when the hot water is running, I can hear that knock through the floor. Yeah. Well, I don't think it has anything to do with your tankless hot water heater. I ordinarily never miss a chance to knock tankless water heater. I'm not a big fan of them, but I really don't think that it, I don't think it has anything to do with the tankless water heater. I think you'd have the same noise if it was a yeah. tank type heater. Yeah, no, I, I didn't think it was the water heater itself. I thought it was the pipe. I didn't know if the, the PEX could be causing expansion and contraction of that. Yeah, or, but or the a, thing is, the thing is, PEX is so, you know, a small diameter and flexible. If it needs to elongate, I, I would think it would just bend in between the support clamps and you and you wouldn't hear anything. Right. Okay. I don't know. That's a tough one. Okay. Uh, my second one is um, we, have, we had the house built about six years ago, and we requested an April Air humidifier. Yeah. And they installed a humidifier that was another brand name. It looks exactly like the April Air. Mm-hmm. Uh, it takes the same, it takes the Air, April Air filter. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, now uh, we can't get this thing above, the humidity above 40% in the house. And yeah. usually you're supposed to adjust that by the temperature outside. Yeah. I've got it on maximum, and I don't have any sweating on my windows whatsoever, and I'm still at 40%. Yeah. Now, 40 percent isn't bad. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, it, it sounds like if the, well, a, a couple of comments. Number one, 40 percent isn't terrible. 
at number two, the imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. And the fact that many, many manufacturers of humidifiers these days are copying the humidifier pad and the exact same size of an April air humidifier pad right. says something. And uh, here's another thing, you know, th- th- there are a lot of things about humidifiers that are the same, no matter what humidifier you buy. But one of the truly neat things, probably the best thing about an April air humidifier is not the humidifier itself. Heck it's been unchanged since the sixties basically. But the best thing about the new April air humidifiers is the control system. The control system is set up so that it uh, can just maintain a lot higher humidity. Now, and one of the things that they came out with as part of their control system on the new humidifiers, and they just did this this year, so even April Air didn't have it until this year, but it's called a blower activation relay. Now, this isn't going to, I mean, number one, when the temp- with the temperatures that you're talking about right now, you aren't going to have your humidifier set at 45% relative humidity because it's too cold out that to, outside to uh, safely bring humidity up to that level but on my when the when the weather is milder one of the problems with humidifiers always has been that the humidifier it 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 can't it they were always wired so that they couldn't come on unless the furnace was on or unless the furnace blower was on because right. no sense running humidifier if the furnace blower is off right well the neat thing that april Air came out with this year and it's with all of their models as far as i know it's called a blower activation relay and and what you what it does if there is a call for humidity you've got the uh, humidistat set at 45 percent and it's only 35 percent in the house and the humidifier wants to come on but ordinarily it couldn't come on because it knows that the blower on the furnace isn't on well now there's a relay in the controller of the new uh, april air humidifiers that says hey we need more humidity we don't care that the furnace isn't on uh, we're going to turn the blower on the furnace on and so it allows the humidifier to operate in mild weather it can operate 24 7 if it wants to now in order for it to do much uh, when it's operating with the blower on but not the furnace on you got to make sure that you run uh, hot water to the humidifier so that you can get some evaporation from the hot water even though you've got cold air going through the humidifier do, do you by the way do you know if you're hooked up to hot water no it's cold water okay well that's the first thing i do right there okay. switch it to hot water all right a- april air is just i mean i've been talking a lot about them in the last few weeks here but a- april air is one of those companies i don't know how many of them there are in this country but uh April Air is one of those companies that is just so much better than their competition that they've really got the market sewed up to the point that they sell more April Air humidifiers than than all of their other competitors combined. Well, we had one in the house that we had before this one, and we were completely satisfied with it. That's why I was kind of stumped with this one because we can't like i said can't get it over i'd like to get it right around 45 percent but it, I well you can but not when it's real cold i mean uh, you know that yeah yeah and then see the other thing about the april air you you're smart about humidifiers you know that that when it's uh, milder temperature out you can get the humidity up to 45 percent and everything is just fine and your doctor's would tell you, yeah, you want 45 or 50 percent. Uh, that's the environment where viruses and bacteria don't like that much humidity, and so that's what you want. But you you know that y- you can't leave it set up at that high humidity setting. Uh, when the temperature gets cold like it has been the last couple of weeks here, if you set it on 45 percent, you're going to have condensation on your windows, you're going to have condensation in your exterior walls, and you're just going to have a big expensive mess to fix see that's what and, i say i've got it set it at the maximum now yeah. and, I, and i just barely have 40 percent well here's an here's another thing that, and this isn't all that new but this is another april air exclusive uh they used to call it auto track what they have now is an outdoor temperature sensor and a little microprocessor humidity controller down on the furnace that that takes the signal from the uh, outdoor temperature sensor and 
translates that into a humidity setting that we want to achieve. In other words, it makes it automatically. Yeah, it does it automatically. Cause okay. You sound like you're a pretty disciplined person, or at least you know what the problem is. Most people aren't disciplined enough to go down to their basement once a day or once a, every few days to change the humidity setting just because the temperature outside changed. So. Right. Anyway, that that's another neat thing about the April air. It almost, I mean, I imagine you said you asked for an April air and didn't get it. It right. kind of ticks you off, I imagine, yeah, and it makes you want to go back and say, "Hey, guys, this isn't what I ordered." <laughs> well, they it. told me at the time. Well, it's the same thing. And yeah, right. Then you find out it's not. Yeah. Anytime somebody tells you, "Oh, this is just as good as," you might as well just say. It's not a, if it's just as good as, and if it's the same thing, why don't you put in the one uh, that I want that that's the real banana? Because right. when somebody says it's just as good as, usually what they're saying is it's going to cost me less money, and it's almost as good as, or it's similar. Right. <laughs> okay, well, I sure thank you for your help. Then. <laughs> you bet. Appreciate right. the call. All righty. That opens the line, 576-7798. A lot of good calls today. Let's see. Uh, we got Gary next here. Hi, Gary. What can I do for you? Oh, hey, Dick. Thanks for uh, taking my call. Yeah. You know, I want to, first of all, thank you because over the years I've learned so much, you know, just listening to your program. And uh, <clears throat> this knowledge is actually I- impresses women. But it does? Yes, it does. Well, how come I'm still single after uh, 61 well, I'm still single years? Too. I think we're just <laughs> discerning. But. Um, <laughs> Oh, thanks. I don't know if I believe that about well, myself. Or, or we love our old motorcycles more than, than, than we should, you know. Are you a motorcycle guy, yeah, too? I, I got an old BSA and, and, and a couple old cars. You know? Well, you going up to Lawrence today, they got a motorcycle there at the National Guard Armory. Yeah, a, yeah I'm not sure I was up in Topeka yesterday, so I had to, I'm going to stay around the house and work. But okay. let me ask you a, a couple questions. Yeah. I, I recently got a, a different house, and it has a sump pump in the basement, and, you know, Spring is coming, and, and the sump pump ran last year, but I want to be able to test it somehow. It doesn't have any battery or anything. It's just plugged into the wall. But mm-hmm. how can I test my sump pump, uh, you know, take off the lid and stick my hand down there? What, what, what should I be doing? You know, it depends on what kind of pump it is. But, uh, I mean, that, that pro- probably the very best way to do it is take the lid off and take some five-gallon buckets of water down there or garden hose and just fill the pit up and make sure that the thing comes on. Okay. Right. Another way to do it that's not as good, but maybe almost as good, if it's a type of, uh, if it's a type of pump that has a float switch on it, you can raise the float and just make sure that yeah. it comes on. Well, it looks like there's gravel and pipes and stuff down underneath the slab, you know. So, mm-hmm. so, and and then the second thing is this: I have a house what they call a, a story and a half, and the bottom is a walkout, or maybe just what I call a little bit of a walk up, and there's a, a quite a big slab. Uh, in the backyard, which is kind of a patio, and then above that is a deck. But right in the middle of that slab is a drain, so the drain is basically outside. Okay. Now, uh, the the grade of the of the yard is pretty steep because, you know, that drain down there must be ten feet below the street. You know, the the level of it. Okay. Or maybe twelve feet below the street because it's just a, a pretty big grade. Yeah. And so my question is this. Is that drain hooked up to the like the rest of the drain pipes that drain the toilets in the basement, mm. or is it a separate type of a deal? Well, the the answer to that question is yes. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. Uh, it should not be tied. Uh, that, that that drain's collecting rainwater, and it should not be connected to the sanitary sewer. That's a violation of the code. Okay. Uh, the sanitary sewer is not. Uh, big enough to handle that massive amount right. of water now now that being said it might still be connected a lot of those drains well, are but but if it, if it's not connected to the sanitary sewer where does it go well it, it would have to be tied into the storm sewer if there's one in your neighborhood or it would have to drain to daylight somewhere oh i see yeah well the reason i was asking is i wanted to spray off that patio and and you know there's like silt and so forth on the concrete and i thought you know, if that goes down the drain, I might be doing something that will permanently clog that up. Yeah, well, I don't know if it's just dirty water. I mean, it depends if it's big hunks of mud. I wouldn't do that. But if it's just... uh, It'd be kind of a silt, you know, because 
there's a little backwash that goes onto the patio because it's just a little bit of a walk-up patio. Yeah. And so, you know, there's like that kind of a grainy stuff when the rain occurs and so yeah. forth. And I thought, well, if I wanted to clean that up, you know, wash it down, you know, like what can you do? You can scrape it up with to, to avoid using the drain or yeah. just flush it down the drain. Well, if it's bad enough that you could scrape it up with a shovel, I'd scrape up all the loose stuff with a yeah. shovel that I yeah. can. I would not put it down the drain. And then when you get rid of the worst part of it with a shovel, then, you know, take the, the small yeah. amount that's left and, and hose Is it. Is there down. any, like, test or a way to figure out, you know, the 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 where that thing goes i mean can you you know like the, the it has a grate on it you know with those little holes but it doesn't mm-hmm. look like it comes out very easy but is there a way to like look down there or test or pull the pull the grate off or look down through the holes and see which way the drain is pointing if it's pointing towards the house it probably goes uh, into the house yeah and i mean you could run a sewer camera through it but that would be expensive yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm i'm just trying to you know I'm trying to not damage anything, and that's all I'm kind of working at here. So I guess probably the the idea is to just scrape up the dirt, scrape up, and then just yep. and then just flush it down a little bit at a time, so yep. it doesn't you know form a concretion yep. or something right like as much that. water as possible. Yeah. Okay. All ready. All right. Thanks for your help. You bet. Appreciate the call. Wow, boy, this hour is flying. Uh, before we run completely out of time here, I'm going to say the same thing that I always do. It, it often is difficult to get an open line during this show, especially so today, I think. And with that in mind, I'm going to say the same thing that I always do. And what I really am doing is giving you an invitation for you to call me anytime during the week, not just during this show. Uh, if you need a little free advice on a project you're working on, you don't need to feel like you're imposing on me. Uh, you can call me after 5 o'clock at night. You can call me Saturday. You can call me on Sunday. And I, I really don't mind. I'm s- serious about that. Now, in all honesty, uh, a lot of the calls that I do get are from somebody that just wants me to come out and do whatever job it is, uh, do the work for them. They either don't have the time or they don't want to mess around with it, so they'll Call me to do the work, and of course I like that, because after all, that's how I make my living. But I'm being completely sincere when I say that I really, I really absolutely don't mind you calling, even if all you need is a little free advice on some do-it-yourself project that you're working on yourself. And I'll do my best to help you out if I can. I'm very easy to get in touch with because my normal business phone rings straight to my cell phone after normal business hours. So really all you have to do is remember one number. That's my normal business number. Here it is. So uh, you can jot it down for future reference. It's 913-888-0550. I am very sincere in this offer. In, in this offer, I give out, give out a lot of free advice and information to a whole lot of people on a daily basis, weekends, after five, I do this wellingly. So once again, don't hesitate to call and the number is 913-888-0550. Okay, let's see here. We, we got time maybe for one more call. Let's uh, see if we can help Steve here. Hi, Steve. What can I do for you? Uh, yes, I, uh, I've got a, uh, a house that's about 13 years old. It's a two-story with a full basement mm-hmm. and the uh last year during that uh last summer during that that major heat spell i uh, i really had trouble keeping my uh my my house cool okay and uh you know and i had a couple of guys come out and one of them told me i needed to uh up my tonnage another one said i needed to uh put in a, a two-zone uh damper of some sort that uh um, I, I, not actually two separate systems, but 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 a louver. I, I, I the way I understood it yeah. to, to move yeah. the air upstairs at night, yeah. for example. Um, and I just wanted to know, uh, you know, how efficient that type of thing is. Is that kind of a, a just kind of a a stopgap way to to do something, or is that I, really a, a decent way to to accomplish? I'm going to, I can tell you right now, we've only got a few more seconds to go. So I'll, I'll start on this, but you but to get a complete answer, you better just give me a holler after the show's over and I'll give you better information. Uh, Jack and Don also, I'm not going to be able to get to your call. So if you give me a holler after the show on 888-0550, I'll help you out. But anyway, you've received 
two different pieces of information from two different technicians. One says bigger air conditioner. And if you're if your uh, house is the same temperature all over the house, upstairs, downstairs, it's uh, 78 degrees, uh, then you need a bigger air conditioner. But if it's only hot upstairs and it's pretty good temperature downstairs, then chances are you don't need a bigger air conditioner. You probably just need uh, zoning to control the airflow. With that, I'm out of time, and I hate to have to say goodbye, but give me a holler after the show, and I'll discuss it in more detail you're listening to the home improvement hour with dick ray the master plumber uh we'll be back next sunday enjoy the warmer weather the proceeding has been a paid program for dick ray master plumber opinions expressed on this program are those of the hosting guests and do not represent the opinion of kmbz or intercom kansas city